Hello and welcome to the video podcast series uh, brought to you by regionalfortrainees.com Tune into learning. This is the brainstormer of the week answer follow-up to the question that we asked in week 3 April 2012. And the question that we asked was which of the following evoke motor responses obtained during the stimulation of sciatic nerve is associated with the best success rate. The choices given to you were dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion and eversion. Obviously the answer is inversion. Let's try and have a look at why this is so. Sciatic nerve is the main branch uh, of the sacral plexus which is derived from L5 to S4 nerve roots. It com comprises of two components from the very beginning uh, which are enclosed within a common sheath. This is the uh, tibial nerve which is derived from the ventral branches of the anterior rami of L4 to S3 and the uh, common peroneal nerve which is derived from the dorsal branches of the same nerve roots. The anatomical dissections have shown that these two uh, nerves are pretty much separate from the very beginning but enclosed within the same common sheath and they uh, subsequently separate into its individual components above the popliteal fossa uh, at a variable distance of 0 to 13 centimeters uh, from the popliteal crease. Let's have a look at what the course uh, is um, in the lower extremity. On the left hand side we can see the course of the sciatic nerve um, and its relationship with bones. On the right hand side we can uh, see the sciatic nerve and its uh, relationship uh, with the muscles. So the sciatic nerve emerges uh, from the pelvis uh, passing through the greater sciatic foramen uh, lying laterally underneath the piriformis muscle. It subsequently comes to lie in between the greater uh, trochanter and ischial tuberosity. Uh, forcing downwards, it lies slightly posteromedial to lesser trochanter and lies posterior to the femur. Uh, as it passes downwards, it comes to lie behind the uh, uh, bicep femoris and subsequently passing downwards to lie more medially to it. Uh, this is the popliteal uh, triangle whose base is formed by the popliteal crease, lateral border is formed by the bicep femoris and the medial border is formed by the semimembranosis and semitendinosis. At this point of time the sciatic nerve separates into its two individual components, the lateral one being common peroneal and the medial one being the tibial nerve. The common peroneal nerve subsequently courses downwards and laterally uh, around the uh, neck of the fibula to divide uh, into superficial and deep components as it approaches the peroneus longus uh, muscle whereas the tibial nerve courses downwards under the calf muscles to eventually emerge slightly medially uh, at, behind the medial malleolus where it divides into its various branches. Let's have a further look at these branches. On the left hand side you can see the branches of the common peroneal nerve whereas uh, on the right hand side you can see the branches of the tibial nerve. Uh, so the common peroneal nerve uh, initially gives articular branches to the knee, uh, gives the lateral uh, branch to the sural nerve. Sural nerve is formed by two branches, lateral coming from common peroneal and its medial branch coming from the tibial nerve. Uh, the superficial peroneal nerve supplies uh, muscular branches to peroneus longus and peroneus brevis which are the main everters of the ankle and this is what we must remember. The deep peroneal nerve supplies the articular branches to ankle. More importantly, it supplies to various muscular branches of which the most important ones are the tibialis anterior uh, which is uh, a dorsiflexor as well as an inverter. So that is important to remember. The tibial nerve on the other side gives articular branches uh, both to the knee and the ankle muscular branches uh, to the calf muscles mainly gastrocnemius, soleus popliteus plantaris and tibialis posterior. These uh, main branches are the plantar flexors of the foot. Additionally the tibialis posterior is also an inverter of the ankle. Uh, other branches being the medial branch to the sural cutaneous nerve, medial calcanean nerve, medial and lateral plantar nerves. So overall uh, the dorsiflexion at the ankle is uh, mainly performed by tibialis anterior in addition with other nerves uh, which are basically supplied by the common peroneal nerve. Eversion at the ankle is also um, 
performed uh, by the common peroneal nerve because it supplies the peroneus longus and brevis, which are the main everters of the foot. The plantar flexion of the ankle uh, at the ankle joint uh, is a function of tibial nerve, uh, mainly being caused by uh, plantaris, gastrocnemius, and tibialis posterior. Whereas the inversion um, is performed both by tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior. Tibialis anterior being supplied by common peroneal and tibialis posterior being supplied by the tibial nerve. Uh, so theoretically, if you are getting an inversion response, you would eventually be hopefully stimulating both uh, common peroneal and tibial component. Or perhaps what it means is that you're not stimulating individual components, you're stimulating the main bulk of the nerve and hopefully getting spread of local anesthetic to both parts. And this is what underlies the theoretical uh, explanation for the results that we have seen. This paper, which comes from uh, Illinois, USA, uh, done by Sukhani et al, titled The Nerve Stimulator Assisted Evoke Motor Response Predicts the Latency and Success of Single Injection Sciatic Block, uh, is a paper that has taken 100 ASA grade 1 and 2 patients, which uh, underwent reconstructive ankle surgery. They received a sciatic nerve uh, block uh, using about 35 mils of lever bupivacaine. Uh, and they studied the end point of inject injection, uh, the first elicited motor response, which could have been an inversion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion or eversion at 0.2 to 0.4 milliamperes. Um, and the most common responses that they obtained in their study was uh, inversion and plantar flexion, whereas eversion and dorsiflexions were least commonly obtained. They were able to demonstrate that the um, inversion response uh, is associated with the shortest uh, latency of sensory and motor onset. The mean time of complete block being about 8.5 minutes when compared to 27 minutes with plantar flexion and 30 minutes with eversion. Additionally, they were also able to show that no rescue blocks were uh, required in uh, the inversion response group, whereas uh, the plantar flexion uh, group required 24%. Uh, uh, in 24% of the cases, they needed to give some sort of a rescue, whereas in, in inversion response, uh, up to 71% of the patients required some sort of a rescue. And this diagram here on the y-axis shows the percent of subjects with complete block and on the x-axis shows the time. So here we can see that the inversion response is associated uh, with the least time required for uh, maximal complete block in most number of patients. Uh, plantar flexion lies somewhere intermediate whereas dorsiflexion and inversion, eversion response uh, are associated with longest time taken uh, for complete block. This plot uh, shows the latency to sensory anesthesia uh, when compared on the x-axis with the different nerve distributions. And in all nerve distributions, you can see that the um, least times to complete anesthesia were associated with cases which had inversion as the work motor response. Um, this uh, plot again shows the latency to motor paralysis uh, with different uh, responses and invariably uh, inversion was associated with the latency, uh, least latency or the least onset time. Uh, so again showing uh, that the most motor onset is much quicker with inversion response than with other responses. And they concluded uh, that the data from their study supports the hypothesis that the uh, inversion response during neurostimulation uh, of sciatic nerve block uh, represents the stimulation of both tibial and peroneal branches of sciatic nerve and is superior to other responses in respect to its success and latency. In short, inversion response is associated with best outcomes. Uh, another paper uh, uh, showing similar results was correlation between evoke motor responses of sciatic nerve and sensory blockade done by Benzon HT et al. Uh, they have taken six volunteers, performed 24 sciatic nerve blocks on them, uh, and in conclusion uh, said the inversion response is uh, the motor response that predicts uh, complete sensory blockage of the foot. Um, 
and uh, incomplete blockade of sciatic nerve may result uh, from the big size of sciatic nerve and uh, the separation uh, the uh, problems associated with the facial coverings of individual nerve bundles um, and uh, blockage of either tibial or peroneal nerves uh, after they have divided rather than before they have divided uh, so that was their conclusion uh, so in a sense we find that uh, inversion is probably the best response and that is uh, the answer to this week's question if you like this podcast uh, one request that we can make through is to share it on facebook or google or scribbit uh, you can also log into our youtube channel which is herman mb 29 and see these podcasts from there as well appreciate for you uh, spending your time on this podcast thank you this is reasonfortrainees.com tune into learning